Okay, in this video I'm going to talk about graphing exponential functions. And an exponential function is a function of the form y equals a to the x, where a is greater than 1, or it's between 0 and 1. So in this video, it's going to take a couple minutes, I'm going to do two graphs by plotting points, and then I'm going to do four other graphs using graph transformations. If you're not familiar with graph transformations, you can always plot points to get the graphs of those. So just a quick overview, an exponential function is a function of the form y equals a to the x where a is greater than 1, or again a is between 0 and 1. If a is greater than 1, you have the graph of a function that's increasing. And if somebody's talking about exponential growth, that means it's growing very rapidly. In a, 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 it may be growing slow for a while, but at some point um, the function will start growing very rapidly. So exponential growth is quick growth. The domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity, all real numbers, and the range is from zero to infinity. It never quite hits the x-axis, uh, gets arbitrarily close to the y value of zero, and that means we have a horizontal asymptote of y equals zero. There's no vertical asymptote. If your a value is between zero and one, you get an exponential function that's decreasing. Same domain, same range, same horizontal asymptote. Um, why, don't we let, why, why don't we let our a value equal 1? Well, in that case, just in case, right, I mean, if you think about the domain, we're leaving out the number 1 and any negative number. Well, if you plug in 1, you would get y equals 1 to the x, and 1 to any power is just 1, so you're just getting the graph of y equals 1, and that's just a horizontal line, that's not an exponential function. So that's why we leave a equals 1 out. Why don't we use negative numbers? Well, suppose we let x equal, excuse me, suppose we let a equal negative 9. Then we would have negative 9 raised to the power of x. Well, okay, suppose I put in a number, say, like x equals 1 half. Well, then we have y equals negative 9 raised to the 1 half power, which is the square root of negative 9, and that's a complex number or an imaginary number. And we want the, the outputs to be real numbers. So that's why we don't use negative numbers either. For any power, uh, uh, any value of x, there's, there's a lot of uh, issues with fractions and roots and, and, uh, is, the, is the problem. So that's why we don't use those either. Okay, so there's the basic graphs. Um, I'm going to try to plot points pretty quickly. It's just arithmetic, but um, let's don't go too quickly. So hopefully you remember your properties of exponents. So let's use 0, negative 1, uh, negative 2, negative 3. We'll use 1, 2, 3. We'll see what happens. Um, I'm going to use, I'm going to start with the bottom half of my table. So at x equals 0, we'll get y equals 2 to the 0 power, which is 1. And if you think about it, no matter what our base is, whatever the value of a is, our base, when you raise that to the zero power, you're always going to get one. So exponential functions, the basic graph of an exponential function will al always go through the point zero, one. So it's like home for exponential functions. They all go there. Okay. So x equals zero, we have y equals two to the zero or one. And now we just have two to the first power. If we plug in x equals one, which is two. If we plug in x equals 2, we'll get 2 squared, which is 4. And if we plug in x equals 3, we'll get 2 to the third, which is 2 times 2 times 2, which is going to give us 8. So that means you've got the points 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 4, and 3, 8. Notice the y values are doubling. So if you just had like a table, right, if I just saw this table and I saw these y values doubling, 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 if I knew that pattern continued, I would say, oh, I've got an exponential function. That's what exponential functions do. They, uh, they, they keep varying by that same rate. Okay, so at, at 1, we're up here at 2. And notice my graph, at 2 I'm already up here at 4, and then at 3 I'm at 8, so my graph is just getting really big really fast. If we plug in negative 3, well then I'll get y equals 2 to the negative third, which is 1 over 2 to the third, which is 1 eighth. Notice if we plug in x equals negative 2, we'll get 2 to the negative second, which is 1 over 2 squared, which is a fourth. And if we plug in negative 1, we'll get 2 to the negative first, which is 1 half. 
So notice we go from a half, as we start moving to the left, we go from a half to a fourth to an eighth. So everything keeps getting smaller and smaller, but no matter what you put in for x, you're always going to have, you know, pick the, uh, 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 you know, negative one million. You'll have two, you'll always have one over two to a positive number, which is always going to give you a positive number. So that's why it never quite hits the x-axis. So that's a rough, quick graph of y equals two to the x. Again, it's just properties of exponents that you have to rem remember when you graph these. Now if we do y equals one-half to the x, again, you could think about this using graph transformations if you are familiar with those. Okay, so again, let's just plot points. Now if we plug in negative three, we'll have y equals one over two to the negative third. Well, that's the same thing as let me be careful here, one to the negative third over two to the negative third. And now I can just flip the fraction and change the sign on the exponents. That's the same thing as two to the third over one to the third. That's eight over, eight over one, which is eight. If we plug in negative two, well, the same thing. I'm gonna have one over two raised to the negative two. That's one raised to the negative second divided by two raised to the negative second. Again, I can just flip. So now I've got 2 squared over 1 to any powers 1, so I'll have 4. All you're doing is flipping the fraction, basically, and changing the sign on the exponent. So if we plug in negative 1, I'm just going to flip and get 2. When we plug in our x value of 0, again, we said anything to the 0 powers 1, so back home. And when we plug in x equals 1, well in this case we would just have 1 half raised to the first power, which is 1 half. If we plug in 2, we'll have 1 half times 1 half, which is 1 fourth. And if we plug in 3, we'll have 1 half times 1 half times 1 half, which is just going to give us 1 eighth. Well, if you plot those points, all that's going to happen is, grab my other graph, all that's happening is this graph is just flipping about the, the y-axis. So now my graph, instead of increasing, it will be decreasing. Again, still going through 0, 1. Okay, so again, all you're doing is just plotting points. So let's look at the ones about that involve graph transformations quickly. Okay, so y equals 2 to the x. We know that that is going to be an exponential function that is increasing as you move left to right because the base is bigger than 1. And for y equals 2 to the x, again, we said that has a horizontal asymptote of x equals 0. Excuse me, the x-axis or the line y equals 0. Okay, so the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. Well, if we, if we add 1, we're just moving the entire graph up one unit. So now that horizontal asymptote, that horizontal asymptote is going to occur at the line y equals 1. And now instead of going through 0, 1, our point on the y-axis will be the point 0, 2. And then it still has that same shape, that increasing as you move left to right. So that's a rough graph of y equals 2 to the x plus 1. y equals 3 to the negative x minus 2. Let's look at that one. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually I'm going to graph y equals 3 to the negative x. Now, you can think about this in a couple ways. In general with graph transformations, if you replace x with negative x, what that does is it flips the graph about the, about the y-axis. So 3 to the x, y equals 3 to the x, that would increase as you move left to right because the base is bigger than 1. So if we replace the x with negative x, well, that's going to flip it about the y-axis, so now it's going to be decreasing. Another way that you could, you know, confirm this is we could write this as y equals 3 raised to the negative 1 power raised to the power of x, right? If you multiply, you still get negative x. But 3 to the negative 1 power, that's 1 over 3 raised to the x. 
So graphing y equals 3, three to the negative x is the same thing as graphing y equals 1 third to the x. And again, we said that's a, an exponential function that's decreasing. So just another way to confirm that. Well, if we subtract 2, the same thing. It's just going to move our graph down 2 units. Whoops. Okay, so all we have to do is shift that graph down 2 units. So instead of going through the point 0, 1, it'll go through 0, negative 1. And the horizontal asymptote will also move down 2 units. So instead of being at y equals 0, it'll be at y equals negative 2. And again, if you want to make a better graph, you can always, of course, plot more points. Um, on a test or a quiz, um, especially if I had time, I would always label a couple more points. And that way, the whoever's grading it, you know, they'll say, oh, this person knows what they're doing. So um, just to make sure. OK, so y equals 3 multiplied by 1 half raised to the x. Again, only 1 half is being raised to the power of x. Well, if we multiply a function by some number, if it's positive and greater than 1, it just, it just it stretches it vertically by a factor of 3. It multiplies all the y values by 3. So let's see. Let's do a quick graph of y equals 1 over 2 to the x. We already saw that one. Well, if we multiply it by 3, it's just going to multiply all the y values by 3. So instead of going through 0, 1, our graph will now go through... 0, 3. And it's going to get steeper even faster. And it's still going to decrease, but it's still going to get arbitrarily close to the x-axis. So you still have that horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. And again, you could always label a couple extra points just by plotting points. All right, last but not least, y equals negative 3 raised to the x minus 1. Again, I always kind of do these in stages. So let's think about the graph of y equals just 3 to the x first. Well, that base is bigger than 1, so we know that it's increasing as you move left to right. Now, if we put a negative out front, that's going to change the sign on all the y values, or equivalently, it's going to reflect the graph about the x-axis. So now our graph will look like that. And instead of going through 0, 1, now it's going through 0, comma, negative 1. OK, so that'll be the graph of y equals negative 3 to the x. And now the same thing. Let's see, we're going to do a, a shift since we're subtracting 1. That's just going to move our graph down by 1 unit. So now instead of going through 0, negative 1, it'll go through the point 0, comma, negative 2. The horizontal asymptote, instead of being at y equals 0, again, that's moved down by 1 unit, so that'll be at y equals negative 1. And then it's still got that same basic shape. So that'll be the graph of y equals negative 3 to the x minus 1. So, all right, I hope, uh, I hope this video helps you understand the graph of exponential functions again. Um, again, exponential functions are super, super important. They absolutely model a lot of real-life situations, such as population growth. So you, you might be able to model, you know, how, how, for example, here in Austin, it's going through a, a kind of a growth boom. I sus should suspect you could model it using an exponential growth with some uh, relative nice degree of accuracy, at least over a short period of time. It also, you use it in finance, it's all over any sort of accounting, um, exponential growth, uh, exponential loss is certainly all over the place. So it's one of those things that, that appears very naturally. So again, hopefully it makes some sense. You're just plotting points and then the graph shifts are just the same as with any other graphs. Uh, same rules, but again, if you if you ever get confused, I always tell people you can always plot points just to make sure. So that's something I do myself as well, just, just to sort of double check. So, all right, good luck. I hope this helps.